still raining, but not too much. And they have room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Welcome to this press conference. And Prime Minister, dear Petri, uh, most welcome to Sweden. Welcome to my home county, Sörmland. And welcome to Harpsund. Uh, Petri, it's your first bilateral visit to Sweden as Prime Minister, but we have met many times and we n have known each other for years. Um, I remember very well uh, our dinner in Helsinki, the very special evening of the mm. 23rd of February last year, the evening before Russia's full-scale invasion of, of Ukraine. We didn't know that specific evening that we just a few hours later would wake up at war, but we did discuss, and I remember this very clearly, the obvious risk that if a full-scale war breaks out, the risk that EU countries may not stay united, and the equal risk that EU and the US might be divided on the support for Ukraine. That did not happen. And our two countries are now among those who lead the support for Ukraine for as long as it takes, as we normally stress. But during that dinner, we also discussed NATO. Yes. None of our countries were at that time allies, not even close to be allies. But both our parties, your party in Finland and my party in Sweden, we were since long actively in favor of Sweden and Finland joining the alliance. And you did something very important that evening. Until this day, pretty unknown in Sweden, I would say, you convinced me that evening that you were sure that Finland will change its mind on NATO and in a very new security environment quite rapidly apply for membership. When I realized that you were right, I also realized that Sweden could and should do the same and become NATO member. That evening was formative for Sweden changing its mind. But Petri, we have also met in different European Union activities and we cooperate very well even when we meet in Brussels. Sweden and Finland simply have a very special relationship and the two of us will develop that relationship even further. During today's meeting, we have so far discussed European security and our long-term commitment to Ukraine. You met with President Zelensky in Kyiv just a few days ago, and I, last weekend, had the honor of hosting the President and his wife here at Harpsund. We have discussed EU's long-term competitiveness and productivity, our commitment to high EU climate ambitions, and not least how to make sure that EU legislation understands and respects our two countries' modern and sustainable world-leading forestry, for example, in the field of bioenergy. We will now make our common voice in this matter very, very clear in the EU. Finland and Sweden are also working closely together on energy, being two countries in the growing European Nuclear Energy Alliance, important as that is. Since we are two governments who share so many priorities in technology, with two of the world's most leading providers of, of telecom solutions, in security, defense and NATO, in fighting climate change using sustainable forestry, and in promoting all fossil-free energy, including nuclears. Given all that, it is very natural for our two governments to also formally sit down together and have a joint cabinet meeting. Therefore, I'm very happy to announce today that the Swedish government and the Finnish government now will make tradition of holding a joint government meeting, exactly as the German and French governments are doing. The first joint government meeting was actually held in Tavas de Hus in 2009. The next one will be held in Sweden next year. And our talks today are a good start for common action domestically, European-wise, 
and on the world stage. Finland and Sweden share quite a few challenges, but we certainly also share very many qualities and possibilities. Let's explore them together. And very finally, it is almost over symbolic that you come here today. Yesterday, one of our three daughters started her studies in Helsinki at Hanken. And a week ago, when I brought our car with all the, her stuff to Helsinki, you came to her small student apartment and helped us to move her in Helsinki. Now she's in your hands. Please, Petri, the word is yours. Thank you so much, Ulf. Besta representanterna av media. Besta, besta Ulf. Jag vill tacka dig för din vänliga inbjudan till Sverige och Vakra Harpsund. Det är min första besök till Sverige som statsminister. Vi har haft mycket bra diskussioner om flera aktuella ämnen. Och vi kommer att försätta en ny dag. Vi har talat om viktiga frågor för våra länder, våra länder. Vi har talat om klimat, säkerhet och ekonomisk och strategisk konkurrenskraft till exempel. Och vi har talat om hur vi kan ännu bättre samarbeta i dessa frågor i EU. Dessa frågor är viktiga för min regering och för mig personligen. Vi har satt ett ambitiöst. Törs mål. Finland vill och ska bli en föregångare gångande, gångare inom ren energi. Och jag tänker bet, berätta mer om det på engelska. Det är lite lättare för mig, men nästa gång jag är här jag lovar jag att svara några frågor på svenska. Och din svenska är mycket bättre än min finska. <laughs> Och den nya regeringen, regeringens program lovar att ta hand om den svenska språket till ställning, och, uh, till ställning i Finland och kunskaperna i svenska. Mm. So I continue in English. May, may I recall that this is important jubilee year for Sweden. Almost exactly 500 years ago. The 6th of June, 1553, to be precise, Gustav Vasa was elected as Swedish king. And this historical moment happened in Strongness, not far away from here. This was also a very important date for Finland, as we were one and the same country at that time. As you know, Finland as an independent country is a little bit younger although also over 100 years. Throughout these years, we have cherished our close ties to Sweden. The common history of our countries is very long. Sweden is our closest partner in all areas. And we will continue to work closely together to strengthen and deepen our relation. We will intensify our cooperation, not only defense and security, but also in the field of technology and on climate. As a concrete example of our cooperation, we have decided, as you said, to hold a joint meeting between our governments of Finland and Sweden next year. We have held a similar joint meeting once before in Finland 2009. We have important issues on the table, from security policy to European Union climate and economic effectiveness of our countries. Here, Finland and Sweden together are more than just the sum of its parts. If we can find an agreement to the venue of the meeting, we can find a place between us. You know we all have been on a Finland sport, or as we say, Sverige sport. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something, and we can end the meeting in, my, in, in karaoke or in my hometown of <laughs> But uh, we are very happy to, to come to Sweden to have a meeting with you. We are also soon both rea reliable partners of North Atlantic Treaty Alliance. 
I'm sure about it. Our NATO membership will strengthen security and stability not only in Finland and Sweden, but throughout Northern Europe. It will also deepen our cooperation with other Nordic and Baltic countries as well. You met President Zelensky last Sunday, Saturday here in Harpsund, and I returned from Kiev yesterday. We have both sent a strong signal that our help to Ukraine will continue. Defense material was one of the key topics in my discussions with President Zelensky. We announced today our 18th defense material package. I saw you made a similar announcement last week. We will and we have to continue our unwavering support for Ukraine. The fact is that 90% of Finns say they continued to support Finland's response to Russia's invasion in the Europarameter populace this summer. In short, we support Ukraine and Ukrainian people economically, militarily and politically. I would like to congratulate Sweden and you, Prime Minister, for an excellent work during the European Union presidency this year. The EU is our most important political and, and economic frame of reference and community of values. A strong, well-functioning and united EU is vital for us. Europe's success is also our success. Influencing the Union's strategic policy to be formulated in 2024 after the European Parliament elections and the programme for the next European Commission will be major priority for both of us. As outlined it, uh, in the government programme, Finland's EU policy priorities include boosting economic growth, strengthening competitiveness and developing the single market, deepening defence cooperation, promoting clean energy investments and the sustainable use of natural resources, advocating for national level decision making in forest policy and safeguarding self-sufficiency in food production. We need to boost the strategic competitiveness of the European Union. This means doing things the smart way. De risking from authority and states, increasing our own clean energy supply and thus reducing dependencies, attracting skilled workers, work for, workforces, boosting science and technology and improving the single market without endless state aid and taxpayers' money, but rather focusing on the competition. I think both Finland and Sweden share these goals and together our future will be even more brighter. Dear Ulf, we have known each others for a long time, as, as you told. The relationship between our countries and our peoples, people has always been a good and friendly one. Well, expect for ice hockey competitions. <laughs> and I am happy that I can call you a colleague and a friend. We will enhance our government's cooperation even more bilaterally in Europe in our support for Ukraine. Because together we are even stronger. Thank you. Thank you so much, Petri. I guess with that the floor is open for questions. The floor is open for some questions. Uh, so please, short and one question. Uh, we start with Swedish television. <coughs> Idag kom ju beskedet att Danmark vill förbjuda koranbränningar. Är det här rätt väg att gå för Sverige? Varje land eh, som utsätts för akuta hot väljer ju sin egen väg att hantera dem. Och jag har stor respekt för det som Danmark gör just nu. Sverige och Danmark har lite olika lagstiftningar. Så att vi har ju precis tillsatt en utredning nu som ser över ordningslagen som vi tror är det verktyg som man bör pröva 
om den verkligen är anpassad för den tid vi lever i just nu och de hot som finns just nu. Vi har inte bestämt oss men vi tycker att det är otroligt viktigt att man får en beredskap, en författningsberedskap så att alla kan ta ställning till om vi kan skydda Sverige ännu bättre eller inte. Så att, eh, att göra som exakt som Danmark, det skulle i princip i Sverige motsvara en ändring i bestämmelserna av hets mot folkgrupp och med all sannolikhet också kräva grundlagsändringar. Vi tycker inte att det är den lämpligaste vägen att gå i Sverige, men dansk lagstiftning ser annorlunda ut så de kan göra den sortens ändringar snabbare. Så att vi titta nu på ordningslagen noggrant med en parlamentarisk referensgrupp och hoppas kunna få ett så bred enighet som möjligt om det behöver göras förändringar. Hallå. Så. Helsingi Sonomat. Jussi Sippola. Jussi Sippola från Helsingi Sonomat. Uh, about the Quran incidents, uh, Finland has uh, blasphemy, blasphemy laws mm. uh, which which uh, deal with these kind of mm. issues. And uh, your uh, Minister of Justice also mentioned that you are looking at the legislation in Finland regarding mm. the Quran incidents. Is this something uh, Sweden would uh, consider? And uh, Prime Minister Orpo, is uh, there something Finland can do to help Sweden in this uh, situation? Mm. Well, as you know, Sweden had such a similar legislation previously. We took that away. Uh, and as I said many times, uh, the basic fundamental right to express yourselves, to, to have a faith, not to have a faith, to criticize faith or faiths, that is fundamental. Uh, so we are not now looking into any constitutional changes. We are discussing whether to change the law of public order, I think is the correct word in English. That, that's what we are doing. Uh, um, obviously different countries have different, uh, uh, different uh, traditions in this regard. Then I normally add, to be honest, that everything that is lawful is not appropriate. I think in the US we use the term lawful but awful. I simply cannot see the good reason for trying to be as uh, as unpolite or as, uh, as brutal as possible when you discuss uh, uh, other people's faith. That is lawful. Uh, but I think it creates also uh, security threats to Sweden. I think everybody uh, should think more right now about Swedish security and uh, Uh, and kind of behave in our ways of international uh, communications as well. Petri. Thank you. Um, at first, I, I really hope that you can find a solution for your homeland problems. And at the same time, our, I know that our security authorities are doing very good cooperation uh, to, to make sure that no terrorist attacks or something like that will happen. But most important support from Finland to Sweden is that we will do all what we can to make sure that Sweden will be the member of NATO as soon as possible. Because Swedish place is in NATO. We start this process together and we want to build up the NATO in, in Northern Europe together with Sweden. We do all what we can. May I add to that? Well, the same, very same day when the security police in Sweden uh, made the decision to raise the, the threat, uh, the formal threat level from three to four out of five, I made a call to, to you, Petri. I made a call to Mette Fredriksson in Copenhagen. I also made a, a call to Jonas Garstör in Oslo to describe the, 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 the background to this and how we now act to, to safeguard our, our security. All these three prime ministers also responded in everything we can do to help you. We will try to do uh, and to safeguard that our uh, security um, uh, uh, police uh, corresponding security agencies are working extremely close together. And this is a good example how we work and how, how your prime minister is working. Mm. We're working very close together and very pragmatic way. Mm. Yeah. Ile? Yeah, uh, thank you. About your government coalition which is quite similar now mm. in, in both mm. countries mm -hmm. um, 
there has been ongoing uh, deb debate of racism, even in among the ministers in, in your governments and publicly, <coughs> both in, in Sweden and in, in Finland. And I mean, this is the um, debate is quite, uh, how do you say, harmful. And what shall you do to get it stopped so it doesn't continue because it's not fruitful? Well, I. From Sweden's point of view, I think I have two comments. One is actually to make politics work. You need to have majorities, you need to be able to unite on the topics that you basically want like to see the same direction. Uh, and that's the kind of the, the one of the core pillars of my government. We made a, uh, an agreement on six different areas where uh, the government, together with the Sweden Democrats, want to see change, and we deliver that change. That doesn't mean that we are uh, aligned in all other in all other matters. I think that you should be honest when you have reasonably the same opinions. You should cooperate to be able to get something done. Too much talk and too little being done in politics. And when you disagree, be honest about that. You don't have to be rude to each other to, to, to be able to describe disagreements. The second point I would like to make is the government needs to have integrity, of course. Uh, uh, and I feel very comfortable in the government I have, uh, I have created. And I have full respect that governments in different countries and legacies in different countries and the way you, you create a government and, and formal differences between how the rules for creating a government, they differ from, from Sweden and Finland, for example. So, so that's, uh, that's my reflection on that. Petr. Uh, maybe I use this opportunity to tell you and to the Swedish people that I condemn racism and Finland will not change. We respect human rights, uh, equality of the people and we will do everything in my, in my government and I will do. I will work to find solutions to things that are not right now. And this is clear message. Finland is knowing, not going to change. TV4. Uh, Ulf Kristersson, när Danmark ändrar sin lag och vi utreder lagändringar, böjer vi oss då för utländska påtryckningar? Nej. Vi böjer oss inte för utländska påtryckningar. Vi tar svenska nationella säkerhetsintressen på mycket, mycket stort allvar. Det tycker jag är en, det är en absolut självklar slutsats. Att vi, först har vi inte bestämt om vi ska ändra. Vad vi nu skaffar oss det är beredskap. Ser över med en gammal lag som egentligen inte har något steg mellan lokala ordningsstörningar eller smittspridning. Då har polisen idag rätt att stoppa eller att flytta en aktion eller en demonstration. Nästa steg är krig. Som alla nu vet besvärande väl så finns det en gråskala också där man utsätts för olika hot. Och att kunna ta med dem i beräkningen eh, för polisen, det vill vi nu utreda. Jag är lite noga med detta, för vi har alltså inte bestämt oss för detta. Vi tänker inte göra några grundlagsändringar som på något sätt generellt sett inskränker svensk yttrandefrihet. Det är de som hotar oss som har fel. Men det är också så att man kan inte utan att förbereda sig bara se på när enskilda individer, ibland inte ens svenska medborgare, använder Sverige som scen. Och utsätter Sverige för akuta eh, risker för attentat. Då måste varje ansvarig regering åtminstone skaffa sig utrymme för att kunna fatta beslut. Men det stora vi gör nu det är att vi skärper säkerheten på alla tänkbara områden. När jag säger till människor att ni ska kunna leva era liv som vanligt så är det för att vi skärper vår säkerhet. Det är otroligt viktigt att säga detta. Det finns ingen uppgift som är viktigare för en regering än att dels se till att våra mänskliga fri- och rättigheter, att de respekteras, men också att skydda människors liv i Sverige och utomlands mot hot som andra utsätter oss för. Men om jag får följa upp, mm. hade vi gjort den här utredningen av Danmark agerat sen om det inte vore för utländska påtryckningar? Ja, men utländska påtryckningar, när Sverige utsätts för allvarliga hot så måste väl varje regering få ställa sig frågan är vi tillräckligt utrustade med försvarsmekanismer för detta? Hade vi starkt försvaret i Sverige om inte världen såg ut som den, gjorde, som den gör just nu? 
Hade det gått med NATO skulle någon säga om inte världen ser ut som... Alltså vad som händer i världen påverkar Sverige. Sverige är inte en isolerad ö. Vi står fullt ut upp för svenska fri- och rättigheter, inklusive rätten att kritisera religion, rätten att ha en religion och respekteras för sin religion. Men vi står också fullt ut upp för att skydda svenska liv och svenska säkerhetsintressen, svenska ekonomiska intressen i Sverige och utomlands. Det här är en ständig balansgång som man måste tycker jag, klara av som regering. That's all for today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you.